The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, so that I can fulfill my duty as a priest of preaching on the gospel passage today, I uh, would just recommend, uh, would just recommend uh, a, an advice, uh, an exercise, a spiritual director at my seminary, who is now a bishop, so you can, that means he's important. He's he good advice. It's not coming from me, it's coming from him. He said, go on a nice boat ride with Jesus in your prayer. No matter where you are, if you're going through a hard time or any time, Go on a boat ride with Jesus and see what Jesus can do while he's in the boat of your life. Anyway, I fulfilled my obligation of talking about the gospel. I want to talk to you guys now about Father's Day uh, and what it means to be father, man, etc. So, on we go. Uh, by the way, once again, uh, fathers, you're going to get a blessing. Let's give all of our dads here a round of applause. Like this. Gentlemen, that's the one day your wives will clap for you. <laughs> Some of the wives laugh there too. You know? <laughs> anyway, uh, see, what we celebrate today in Father's Day, in all seriousness, is of course we celebrate fatherhood, but even more than that is we celebrate masculinity and manhood in general. Just as Mother's Day is a celebration for mothers, but it's also a celebration for womanhood in general, so too is Father's Day. And it's kind of interesting. I, I, I didn't really know how I was going to start this particular part of the homily, so I'm just going to kind of say, you know, it's kind of tragic when you look out into, like, how kind of culture and society uh, has kind of uh, digressed, shall we say, or regressed uh, over the last few years. It's interesting that what's happened uh, is that men have essentially, what society and the kind of the forces at work have done is, basically stunted maturity and delayed and basically prolonged adolescence by about two or three decades. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I, that is quite problematic, right? Because, you know, when you're a, an adult, a man, you're supposed to act like a man, not a child, right? Men act certain ways, children act certain ways, and nowadays it's kind of it's kind of interesting that men are like encouraged and praised for acting like a bunch of high school seniors. Right? It's almost as if like that little transitional phase between high school and college has like become the modus vivendi of basically what society of, of, of men in society. Right? And it's it's one, so it's dangerous. Men, please, you're called to something higher, right? We're called to more than that. Me, because obviously I am a man. We are called to something more than that. What the world proposes as masculinity is nothing but essentially childhood, but with money or opportunity, right? It's like every eighth grade boy's like fantasy of what they think adulthood would be like. But like last time I checked, like no offense to any eighth graders in here, but now last time I checked, eighth graders tended to not have like the most complete and comprehensive and accurate view of the world. No offense to eighth graders, but it's true, right? If you're the parent who had an eighth grader, you know it's really true. <laughs> Applies for me too. So we have to then look to, like who do we look to? Who do we look for as an example of manliness? Right? Some obvious ones, so let's do three real quick. One, St. Joseph. Right? He's obvious. That's an obvious one. St. Joseph, he was the foster or stepfather of Jesus. Right? God picked him from the beginning of all time for a reason. Because he, he had it and he knew he was going to have it. He's a great man. And can look at some qualities. One, he was a man of strength. Right? Of interior, a great interior strength. One, of also physical strength. He was a stonemason, but also of interior strength. He knew who he was. He was secure in himself because he was secure in God. And so when God could ask him to do the great task of taking Mary into his home, of guarding women, or a woman, he was up for the challenge. 
and immediately did what he was asked to do. And when he was charged with taking care of Jesus, with raising life, particularly God himself, of course, he immediately responded. Joseph had the wherewithal. He was a man who just got things done. He knew what he had to do for his family, and he did it. Notice in the Gospels, Joseph never says a word. There's nothing that we have, I mean, no phrases that were said. All we have is that God or an angel appears to him, says something, and he gets up and does it. He's a man of action. Gentlemen, we need to be, we need to be men of action. Now, we're also not like St. Joseph in the sense of he was a great man of virtue. We make mistakes, that's okay. Right? He was the only sinner in the Holy Family, poor guy. Right? <laughs> Guys can never get a break. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man, never get a break. But we can take solace in the fact that he wasn't perfect. And yet here he is still an example for us. It's almost as if God knew what he was doing. Men, we need to be like him. Men of action, men of fortitude, men of security. We need to know who we are in God. If Joseph had any insecurities laying around or, or latent or remaining, he certainly he gave them to God and didn't let his insecurities and personal deficiencies get in the way of his vocation, of being a husband and a father, of being a man. Gentlemen, we need to make sure that anything that would hold us back or weaken us in any way, any, we turn them over to God. Let him help us out. Secondly, the, spoiler, the next two are perfect. So, eh, Jesus. He's the model of masculinity. He's the perfect man. Right? Uh, it's interesting. This is an interesting fact. It's a true fact. In Italy, when, they are, when you go to hear confessions, not that any of you would hear confessions in Italy. I'm the priest, not you, but so anyway. But when a priest hears confessions in Italy, we have to be specially trained to hear a certain phrase. Because when you hear it, it literally just is like an obvious fact. But it has certain meaning. The phrase is, sono un uomo, I'm a man. And it's like, someone comes to me in confession in Italian, I'm like, yes, I can tell from your voice, or from how you look, or whatever, you are a man. What he means, the Italians, and I'm Italian, so don't be offended, Italians, all right? I'm Italian, relax. What he's really saying is that he's been unfaithful. And that, of course, it's okay, because he's a man. Hmm. Let's look at what Jesus has to say or do about that. Well, Jesus, getting to the heart of it, hung out with tax collectors and sinners, that is, women who break the sixth commandment and didn't sin. Men, we have no excuse. Jesus showed us how we need to be. Can't make any excuses. Jesus had company with people whose jobs, and this is not a judgment of any, just simplify here, whose jobs it was to sin. Men, we can't go to confession and say, I'm a man, or ah, I'm only a man. See, when God created us, last time I checked, if you read Genesis, fact check it, it's true, he didn't make us with sin. Sin wasn't part of our original creation. It wasn't the intent of creation. Yes, it affects us. Yes, we all sin. Yes, we have concupiscence, that tendency to sin. As Paul says, why do we do the things we don't want to do? We've all been there, no matter what the sin was. But Paul is clear, Jesus is certainly very clear, we can't use that as an excuse for our masculinity to say we're not going to rise to the challenge, we're not going to rise to the occasion. And lastly, looking at God, the Father. Gentlemen, he shows you how to be a father. He laid it out in your own life, in your own relationship, how to be a father. 
I'm not going to sit here and tell you how to be. I don't have kids of my own. I know the kind of craziness I drove my parents through when I was younger. So, but I still, I'm not, I don't have kids. So I'm not going to tell you how to be a dad. But I will tell you that if your fatherhood doesn't look like God's, it might not be the way it should be. And I say that as a man who is called father and has to live up to that. See, God gave us, you and me, in terms of my spiritual fatherhood, gave us a great template. If you are struggling as a father, turn to God to show you. Your relationship with him will give you the roadmap, the outline, the keys to victory, so to speak, in how to be a father. He's tender with us. If he gets angry or frustrated, he doesn't lash out at us. But he simply offers us a hand and helps us out. He's always forgiving of us. How many times do we all, myself included, go to confession with the same sins over and over again, and yet he still forgives us and loves us and gives us a second, third, fourth, fifth, infinite chance? How much does he never hold anything back from us, no matter what we've done to him? But he always seems to want to bless us and gift us and be a part of our lives, even when we reject him so on and so forth. So gentlemen, especially the fathers here, learn fatherhood from God, the Father, our Father, your Father. Learn it from the best. Learn it from the best. And model God, model God's fatherhood in your own life. You won't be perfect, trust me, but you can at least try. And lastly, kind of going back to this idea of like a secular culture, how it just kind of is fine with men languishing. Someone, uh, a parishioner from here actually, far before, far before I was a priest, once told me the measure of a parish, the health, how you measure the health of a parish is by the spiritual health of the men. And she praised, she, she is a woman, praised Christ the King for the men at this parish. And I was like, oh man, this place must be like the, like the Wonderland or Disney World of parishes. It is actually, as it happens. <laughs> it is. This is great. I'm really sad to be leaving, by the way. This place is like amazing. You guys are amazing. But then I got to know the men here. And she was right. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we got a good thing going on for us here. Let me tell you. The men's groups here have helped me grow in the faith and grow as a man of faith and in the priesthood too. Society St. Joseph, Friday mornings, men Bible study, Exodus 90, etc., etc. The men here have made me a better man. Gentlemen, I want to encourage you to continue the fine tradition of the men of Christ the King. Continue the fine tradition of being intentionally intentional about how you grow in the faith and how you grow in your life, but being a better man. The society St. Joseph people wake up, at, they wake up for a 6 a.m. meeting every Tuesday during the regular year to grow in faith, not to get out of like, you know, getting their kids ready for school, but to grow in the faith. It's incredible. How beautiful is that? How manly is that? That they sacrifice a little bit of rest for a lot of holiness. Gentlemen, the world has lied to us and said we can be nothing greater than our 18-year-old selves. But the Lord promises us something different, promises us something greater. We can live up to this. We can, with his help, of course, meet the expectations and the calling he has given us. And here, especially at Christ the King, we have every resource and opportunity to be the men God is calling us to be. And so, gentlemen, I offer you a challenge. You have a little bit of time. I know some of the men's Bible studies continue, right, Kevin? They're continuing, so you can talk to Kevin Gaffney afterwards or email him, whatever, right? The men's Bible study continuing. Our Society of St. Joseph pauses for the summer. But, gentlemen, I challenge you to ask the Lord how he wants you to grow, because he does. And I want to ask if you're man enough to accept the challenge, the invitation. That if you're strong enough to accept 
that you can become, with his help, the man he's called you to be, and that you can put forth the effort necessary to do that. Men of Christ the King, this Father's Day is your day. Rise to the challenge. Keep that strong tradition going to be the men who's calling you and us 